If I had a pound for every time someone tells me they don't have room for internal wall insulation, I'd be a really rich woman. And the comment comes most often from those who live in Victorian and older houses. I was exactly the same. I thought we'd have no room to move in our 1901 end of terrace. In fact, the difference is minimal. We've got 100 mil on all the external walls and I challenge anyone to notice the difference. I'm Judith Leary-Joyce. I'm a retrofit advocate and eco-warrior. I want all of us to live in warm and comfortable homes that are cheap to run. It's better for us, but it also reduces the 21% of UK emissions that comes from leaky homes, so it's a win-win. We retrofitted our Victorian end of terrace and we're now saving 75% of our energy usage, which amazes me every single day. I got so excited about it that I wrote the Beginner's Guide to Eco Renovation to help other people do the same and to navigate this minefield and all this different information. In this video, I'm going to summarise the whole process of installing internal wall insulation in an old house. And I'll be pointing you to more detailed videos when you need them. The big advantage of internal wall insulation is you can take one room at a time. As long as you do the whole process in each room, that is you make it airtight, insulate and ventilate. So your first job is to understand your location. The amount of insulation you can have in your home will depend upon the climate in your area. I live in the southeast, which is relatively sheltered, so it's fine for us to have 100 mil internally. But if we lived on the coast, there'd be a lot more moisture in the air, so 100 mil would cause problems. And this is quite a complex subject, as you can imagine. So the best way forward is to talk to your architect, a retrofit expert or a bespoke supplier of sustainable insulation. They'll be able to tell you what your circumstances require. And because this is fascinating, I'm going to go exploring and then I'll put what I've learned into a video for you soon. Then you need to understand your home. The age of your house is significant when it comes to making home energy efficient because it changes the materials you need to use. If your house was built before 1940 and you've got a suspended floor, then your house is going to be breathable. And that means you need to use materials that are also breathable. Now, if you don't know the answer to that question, the way to check is to look for air bricks at ground level. Pay particular attention to the original parts of the house and the old style, rather elaborate air bricks. These will confirm that you have a suspended floor and a breathable Victorian house or older. The reason that the traditional air bricks are the best indicator is that modern block and beam concrete floors also have air bricks. So fancy ones are going to be more reliable for you. So why does breathability matter? Breathability means that the house is vapour permeable. It allows water vapour to move through the walls and this helps the house stay dry. The other way the house stays dry is through ventilation. Now old houses have this in spades. Ill-fitting windows, chimneys, leaky floorboards, you name it, the cold air is coming in. And the combination of breathability and ventilation means that old homes didn't have condensation and mould. Now that we want to save energy, we're closing up all the gaps, filling the chimneys, double glazing the windows, but that opens us up to all sorts of problems with vapour and moisture. But it can still all be done as long as we stay vapour permeable and include good ventilation. So look at this video to understand more about ventilation. So now we know you're in an old house, so you need to use breathable insulation materials. But don't worry, there's loads of options out there and they're fascinating. We've got wood fibre, so flexible or rigid. And this is made from the bits of wool left over when everything else has been used. Here's a nice one, Pava textile made with denim jeans, old cotton t-shirts and velvet. Then you've got hemp. You've got flexible hemp or you've got hemp blocks that can go in the wall. You've got sheep's wool, but do check how it's treated for moths. You've got cork and this is good for insulation and for sound. Then you've got sisal and 
Finally, diathonite, which is a thermal plaster. This can be used outside the house as well as inside and you can put it onto different thicknesses. And that's not all, there's other options as well out there. But you need to be aware that your builder may want to use PIR. This is made from petrochemicals and it off gases volatile organic compounds. And when those come off, it causes it to shrink a bit and that can leave gaps in your insulation. It also, I'm afraid, gives off cyanide when it's burning. But don't just believe me on that. I'll put a link in the description below so to an article about it, go and explore. The worst thing about PIR is it's definitely not vapour permeable, which means if you put it in your old house, you'll end up with condensation in your rooms or interstitial condensation within the walls. Now, there's a video here that will tell you a lot more about all the different forms of insulation. Your next job is to check out your plaster. Is it old and damaged? Do you have modern gypsum plaster, so non-permeable on a vapour permeable wall? Is the paint peeling? Now, if it is, this indicates that there's moisture behind the plaster. Or are there any just general signs of wear and tear? If you have any of the above, or you suspect any of the above, just take the plaster off the wall and know it's messy. But why to go to all this trouble and risk it being not right? Look at this video now for more information about the plaster. So then what is the process? Well, there are three ways you can do this. You can build a wooden framework, attach it to the wall and fill it with flexible insulation. You can use rigid insulation applied directly to the wall or you can use a thermal plaster applied directly to the brick to the thickness of your choice. You'll have a number of different layers so you'll start off with a skim of plaster to give you a smooth surface and then you'll put on air tightness membrane. Your wooden framework will go against the membrane and that'll be filled with insulation. Above that you'll put a wood fibre version of plasterboard. On top of that will go lime plaster. And on top of that, breathable paint or wallpaper. So let's look at that in a bit more detail. You put a skim of lime plaster or thermally efficient diathonite to give a smooth surface. You cover that with an air tightness membrane. This means that vapour can pass through it, but not air just feels a bit like magic to me. And you seal that in with an air tightness tape like Contiga tape. I'll put a link to another video above to tell you more about air tightness. Then you build the wooden framework onto the wall over the airtight membrane and you fill that with a flexible form of sustainable insulation, wood, uh, hemp, denim, sisal, whatever you choose. And then you cover that with a rigid wood fibre. We used one called Isolayer, and that is in place of a standard plasterboard. The final layer needs to be lime plaster, and there are now modern forms of breathable lime that can be applied in one day, it makes life so much easier. And don't forget that your breathable paint is your final layer, maybe graphenstone, earthborn, or if you want to use wallpaper, a non-woven wallpaper, but make sure your glue is breathable. I'll put a link to a video about paint and lime above here for you to go and take a look at. Now I do encourage you to do your homework to make sure that you get what you need and what you want. I'll put some links in the description to get you going. These are people that I know of, they're not the only ones, but just let them start you off. The second option is to use a rigid insulation and that's applied directly to the wall. The layers in this version will be, you seal in the wall, then you skim, put on a skim of plaster or diathonite, rigid wood fibre, followed by lime plaster, breathable paint or wallpaper. So if we look at that in a bit more detail, you seal the wall with the airtight tape. 
that's putting it along the line where the wall meets the ceiling and the wall meets the floor and that stops any air coming through those joins. Next step is to cover the brick with a skim of plaster or diathonite. I would always think diathonite makes sense because it gives you a bit more thermal performance. Why waste the opportunity? Then run the skim up and over the edge of the tape so you get a tight seal. You then take your rigid wood fibre and glue this to the wall using a vapour permeable glue. On top of this you put lime plaster. Again use a modern version such as lime green solo or baumit. These can be put on in just one day. On top of that of course you get in the pattern here breathable paint or breathable wallpaper. Now option three just focuses on thermal plaster. There the layers are back to the brick as we've discussed before seal the wall, thermal plaster, lime plaster, breathable paint and wallpaper. Now doing it this way you're going to need a lime plasterer or an inquisitive plasterer who's up for learning something new. I mean there's a whole job out there for somebody who's interested in learning more. Thermal plaster is put on in layers and it can be sprayed on or troweled on depending on the area to be covered but each layer needs to dry before the next one's put on. It's generally put on in about three layers and the thickness can vary according to need. On the front wall of our house where we've got the bay window it's varying between 60 mil and 100 mil because it can shade in round the corners. Lime plaster goes on top of this when this is fully dry followed by breathable paint and wallpaper. So there are loads of options for internal wall insulation. Just remember you've got to keep the whole system vapour permeable because of your old house and never skimp on your ventilation and there's a link up here to a video on ventilation. Now this can seem like a lot in one go but missing either of those things breathability or ventilation can leave you with more problems to solve than you started with. So let me know if you want me to talk more about any of those specifics or you want me to talk about other things. I'm always keen to learn about this and share what I've learned and do let me know how you're getting on. I'd love to hear.